In this section, you will get a quick overview of the ribbon tabs, with each tab being discussed more fully in later sections. So first of all, we need to show what's in there. So what do I do? Go down here, show tabs and commands. So the home is the default. Whatever you're doing in your worksheet, you finish it, Excel reverts to the home tab. You will see groups here under the home tab. We'll talk about them in detail in later sections. The home tab shows you the clipboard for copy, cut, and paste, the fonts, color, underline, italic, bold, make things bigger or smaller. Here we go. Choose. There's your different fonts and the sizes. We will go through these a lot more in detail. There's your alignment, up, middle, bottom, left, middle, right. There's all kinds of things you're going to see. These are the most common, most general commands that an Excel user would want to use. That's why they're on what's called the Home tab. We will talk about them all. The next tab, Insert, allows me to insert tables. Illustrations are pictures, whether they're online or on your computer. We'll see you can add different applications. You can make charts. We'll learn about those. We'll learn also about different types of maps you can use, spark lines. Notice that sometimes it gives me detailed. See that? And sometimes it's just very simple. We will learn more about each of these types. These are things that you insert into your worksheet to make it more powerful, interesting, graphical, etc. We'll learn more about each of them. Page layout has to do with themes. How does it look? Set my margin, page orientation, size. Again, different paper size. This depends on your printer. Setting the print area, page breaks, background. Now you can choose a picture for your background in Excel. The only problem with it, as I've found, is if your picture in the background has a lot of detail, you won't be able to see any data in the foreground. It's very difficult. So beware of the picture. And then there's titles. When you print, you have a choice. Here, I can scale to fit. And I have different options when I'm working with this. Or I can arrange. I can arrange different things if I have several images in my workbook. The formula tab will be anything for my functions. Function library, they are now grouped in types of functions. Notice when I mouse over them, it helps. It says this is what it's all about. We will talk about these in detail. You can also give names to cells or groups of cells. You can use those names in formulas. There are more complex things you can do with formulas that are beyond this introductory course. You can learn about them in the advanced course. That's true as well of the watch window and the calculation options. Another advanced feature is the Data tab. You can import data from QuickBooks, from Access, from some other applications into Excel, and you can export once you've done something with it in Excel. You can also connect to a database with an Excel spreadsheet. You can have a Visual Basic program that connects to your Excel and updates your worksheet. You can sort your data. You can filter it based on some criteria you set. Again, these are advanced functionality. There are also more data tools. Pretty much the data tab, other than the group ungroup, is for very advanced users of Excel and will be described in the advanced course. The review tab is where you go if you want to help with spelling. We'll talk about that. Research online now, a thesaurus, translating into certain languages, not every language, or to add comments. A new user might be likely to add comments. Check the spelling, right? Here is where we're going to protect the worksheet, the workbook, share it online, protect and share, and even allow users to be specifically editing only certain ranges. Here is also your track changes. We will discuss this tab in more detail in later sections. The View tab allows me to see things either in the page break, that was interesting, normal view, custom views, page layout. You'll see all these different views so that you know how it's going to print. 
Here is the zoom if I need it to be bigger or smaller. We'll talk more about that later. And here's some functionality where I can open in the same worksheet a second window. If I have a very large worksheet that I need to only see several parts of it, I can do that. Again, this is slightly more advanced, but we'll see a little bit about freezing various parts of it as you scroll. Macros are an advanced functionality where you record a series of keystrokes, give it a short name, and then I can use that again and again. Developer tab, this is much more detailed, much more advanced than an introductory course. But what you need to know is that Office 2013 provides some advanced tools for those who want to actually write software that uses Excel to do calculations or even to display. Now, some versions of Excel 2013 also have a PDF tab on the ribbon. It is possible to customize the ribbon if you right click. You can customize the quick access toolbar, which we showed in another section. You can show it below the ribbon or even customize the ribbon. We'll talk more about that in a later section. Collapsing the ribbon goes like this. Then if I want to show it again. I show it like this. So here's an overview. This was an overview of the ribbon tabs. We will delve into each tab and tell you details in other sections.